Jesus says, embrace the whole truth so that I don't have to say, I never knew you. December 4th, 2019, words from Jesus to Sister Claire, spoken by Jackie. Claire began, Lord, truly, what is on your heart? I struggle with the foolish things men say about your teachings. I grieve over their blindness to the scriptures. It is as though they have put their salvation into the hands of men instead of into your hands. O oh Lord! And Jesus began to speak to me. And by the way, this is about encounters I have had with people who do not have the whole gospel. They're pretty stuck on the prosperity gospel. They don't see the life that Jesus led and that we are to lead the same life in this world that he led. If we suffer with him, we will be raised with him. And there are so many scriptures to confirm this over and over again. But men continue to say foolish things about these teachings. And I grieve over their blindness because it's right there in the scriptures. The Lord began and said, I'm not here to beat you, dear ones, yet I'm forced to admonish you in strong words for the sake of truth. I ask you to examine the scriptures to discern the fullness of their meaning. Much has been hidden from you, my people. A curtain has been drawn across certain parts of my truth to prevent you from being fully equipped to fight against evil in high places. If you read the history of America written by Americans, you will get an entirely different picture than a history written by the Native American people. And so it is with religion. If you study what the Jews have said about Christianity, you will not be given the same information you would have received if it had been written by a Christian who witnessed me after I was raised from the dead. Men have their own ways and will choose, out of a body of knowledge, those things that support their theories. Men are prone to form groups around their favorite theories and doctrines. And should something contrary to that come up, they will downplay its significance and restate the strength of their own arguments. And so you find the prosperity gospel flourishing. Pain and suffering are unpleasant. Prosperity and material abundance are comforting and feed men's needs to be in control, to be the master of his own destiny, wealthy and healthy. In a word, successful by worldly standards. And that is precisely what the scribes and Pharisees lived a life of privilege, material abundance and respect. Yet they could not recognize me when I came to them. Their standards had been corrupted by their carnal natures and surely nothing of any significance could ever come from Nazareth. See how agreeable people become when you speak to their comfort levels, but begin to challenge their standards their social standards and their favorite theories and comfort levels, and you will immediately arouse jealousy and contentiousness. My people, I've called you to see truth, not a man's presentation of truth, but my truth. I've hidden nothing from you. I came in a form undeniably different than what was anticipated of me, I did not pander to their prosperous standards, which had seriously corrupted their morals. Rather, I came in naked and stark truth, proclaiming love to the outcast, healing to the sick, hope to the poor, and hypocrisy to the rich, who made life miserable for the poor. 
I did no political posturing, nor did I promise an abundance of riches. I confronted evil where it stood. I lowered myself to the most miserable and poor, offering them healing and comfort. I challenged the integrity of those who saw themselves as righteous. The rich young ruler, the crafty Pharisee, and he who had the power to crucify me. I came not into the chambers of the wealthy, but into the lowliness of the ox and the lamb. I died not surrounded by wealthy doctors and remedies, but in ignominy between two thieves. I had nowhere to lay my head and no tomb for my body. I could not have made a more striking statement of what was most important in life than I did in my incarnation. But contrast that, my people, with your prosperity teachers who drive expensive vehicles, wear expensive suits and build elaborate churches. Contrast that to the lifestyle of a minister with a large wealthy congregation. Isn't that what Christian ministers dream of these days? A great auditorium, expensive speakers and lighting, climate control, comfortable seating for thousands. Is this not what is looked up to in this country and even abroad? Is this not the symbol of success? But I say to you, it is not what I consider success. This is not to be praised in my eyes. Wealth and corruption, acquisition and compromise go hand in hand. I've called you to the simplicity and purity of the Gospels. Take nothing for the journey. For where your treasure is, there shall your heart be also. Did I not say there was no one born of a woman greater than John the Baptist? And yet, where were his sumptuous meals and fine clothing? Does it not occur to you that there is something drastically wrong with the prosperity twist on my holy and pure life? Is there not a chasm of disparity between the rich and influential and the poverty and life of condemnation of your Christ? So why is it that no one acknowledges the example I lift before you all? Rather, there is the oft-quoted scripture of the abundant life, abundant in carnal delights, not in righteousness, peace and joy, Some of you withstand me even now, yet I tell you, you are not walking in truth, rather in the deception of man's ways. You do not know me, you do not know my ways or my life, or understand what I came to earth to bring. Yet it is all before you in the Gospels from start to finish. Rather, you have chosen to be spoon-fed by doctrines of men, rather than to accept the entirety of my truth, as it is written in the scriptures. You refuse to go back to the beginning when my apostles taught truth. Truly, you are cafeteria Christians, served up the doctrines of men while truth is left to languish, because your chefs had their own agenda, their favorite doctrines, which you mistook for truth because you do not know my ways or my scriptures. Wake up! Wake up before it is too late for you. I didn't come to feather your nests. I came to heal, to bring peace, truth and righteousness, not material wealth which corrupts. Again, where your treasure is, there also is your heart. Is your heart for the poor, the sick, the lame, or is it for the rich, the healthy, and fame? You are living a corrupted gospel. You do not know my ways. Your ways are men's ways. Put aside the traditions of men's denominations and embrace the scriptures with all your heart. So I will not be forced to say on that day, I never knew you.